everybody. I recently had a request to do a VATS bypass video on the Corvette. And even though I did this years ago, I can show you what needs to be done and how to do it. And what the VATS system is, is a, uh, a security system that will keep your car from starting if somebody doesn't have the right key. So, even though I've already done this before, I need to take out the center console for a different project. So, it's a good time to video it. What VATS operates by is this little pellet that's in your factory key. Now, a lot of cars anymore have RF chips built into the key that there'll be a ring antenna back there that will pick up the RF chip. This is not that sophisticated. That little piece in the key is nothing more than a resistor of a certain value. It slides into the key. There's contacts on both sides that touch it. It measures the resistance. If the resistance is right, your car will start. If not, your car will not crank because down in the passenger floorboard above the BCM, there is a relay that the BCM activates if it likes the key, and that will in turn let your starter activate. If it doesn't like the key, then you'll get a no start. If you jump the relay across there, but it will cut your fuel after a couple of seconds, so you're still not going to be able to go anywhere. So, I like to bypass this. I'm not really worried about anybody stealing the vet. And I'm figuring it's much more likely that this is going to leave me stranded or would leave me stranded if I still had it hooked up. So let's go in the shop, measure the key, and then we'll take apart the inside of the car. Now to do this, you have to have some kind of multimeter. And you'll turn your meter on to ohms. Symbol right there. Okay, you take your meter and you put a lead on each side of that contact. All right, there we go, 1.85. Okay, that's 1.85 and up at the top, it had a K, which means in thousands. So that's 1.85 thousand ohms. You need to get a resistor. See these little deals here, resistors. Quarter watt resistors are fine because you're not running a bunch of current through this resistor. But you need to have one that's 1.85K or as close as possible. And this kit was from Direct Electronics. It's a 654T resistor pack. You might still be able to get this. I got this from a local electronics store. I know that you can get on eBay and just type in VATS resistor kit and you can uh, find one. This kit came with a little chart that shows you the color coding on your resistors because each resistor has color bands on it. Now if you're bad eyesight and colorblind like I am, you'll just have to test them with the meter to find one that's 1.85. So you go down here, it tells you, it shows you what ohms resistance that are in the pack and this shows 1800 ohms which would be 1 1.8 and then also a 1.87 or 1870 ohms that would be the one I want and it would be a brown gray violet brown brown stripes okay I went through the pile uh, apparently there was only one 1870 ohm resistor in the pack the closest I could find in here was a seventeen seventy which would be the equivalent of an eighteen hundred. There is a there is an error factor on these resistors. In fact one of the color bands tells you what percentage plus or minus that it could be off and still be considered acceptable. But you want to get the resistor that is closest to what your key read. And you can get one of these kits or you can just measure your key and order the exact resistor you need. Go to Radio Shack if you still got one of those somewhere. But either way, get whatever's closest. Make sure you understand what you're measuring. Like I said, this 1.773, that's 1,773 ohms because it says 1.773K up at the top. And take this one, for example. It says 
2K, so that's 682 ohms. And if you had one that didn't have the decimal point and didn't have the K on top, say it was like a 170, then that would just be a 170 ohm resistor. So get the resistor that is as close to yours as you can get. You can also hook up resistors in series to get a different value, hooking them like end to end. But I'm not going to get into that. You add the ohms on those. You can also hook them in parallel. Not going to get into that. If you need to get into that and you don't know how to do it, I would suggest Googling that. But you can get different uh, ohm readings by hooking them in parallel. But you need a resistor or resistors that equal what your key does. So now let's go out to the car. Okay, in the car, what you got to do is to get to the area behind your key here. So we'll take out the center console because it is all built into your radio bezel. Well, the first thing to do, pop open your center console, two caps here, pop out, take out. 10 millimeter nut on each side. Next up, pop your switch deal here out. And if you still have an airbag, you'll have a connector here. If you still have your traction control hooked up, you'll have a connector there. Disconnect both of those. Set this out of the way. And that leaves you with your power outlet deal here. Pull the plug out of it. And take off two more 10 millimeter nuts. Once those nuts are undone, you can lift up on the back of your center console, slide it back. I ought to do this one handed. Flip it up, and you have a connector there for your fuel door. Disconnect it, and you can set the center console out of the way. Next, I'm going to pull the shifter knob, which if you've got a C6 shifter, T25 Torx here, undo that screw. Knob comes off. If you still have the factory C5 shifter, I feel bad for you. You have to pop the center out of that, and then there is a wedge that goes down in. You pry it up, and then the, the uh, knob will come off. There's some good videos on taking that off if you need help. One extra step I've got to do is take out the uh, wide band because I put it in the ashtray. I got a couple little screws down at the bottom. I got to take out and get that out of there. Now, pull out. Now we need to pull out the ashtray. And there is a torque screw there and a torque screw there. And then pop out a little cover on your temperature sensor and another torque screw there. And those were all T15s. So now you should be able to pull this assembly back. Then you'll need to reach around here and disconnect the wire on the back of that power outlet. It just snaps off. I went ahead and pulled it down a little further to make sure I knew what I was talking about because it has been several years since I did this. I went ahead and took the, the kick panel off here, which you'd already taken out this screw here. If you want to take this out, over on this side you have your switch for either your trunk or your trunk and your driving lights. It's just got a uh, compression clip so that your plastic tool will pop this out undo the wire and then there is a screw on each side on the bottom you can take this kick panel off but that gives you total access in here but this wire right here coming off the switch is what measures that resistance or is what's hooked up and I I'm surprised I actually left the wire in there normally and <laughs> it won't be there when we're done now but what I did just went underneath here, followed the line around. Let me tuck this out of the way. Followed this line down. Comes down and it was fastened to this connector right here. So this line here, these two lines were what hooked on here before I snipped it. 
So I snipped it, left a little bit hanging out of this plug, and that lets you, let me use both hands, and that lets you take that into the plug over to the workbench, and underneath that black tape there is that resistor. I just soldered it onto each wire and uh, covered it in black tape. Since you could pull this off, it was really easy to solder. You weren't trying to do it under the dash. You just do it on the workbench, solder the wires on, and cover it up with tape, plug it back in, and you're good to go. I've also seen people undo the plug and just stick the leads of the resistor up into the other end of the plug. But since this is so critical that it works right all the time, I did it this way. And that's all there is to it. You can either tuck this cut off wire back in there somewhere like I did the first time. Or I'm going to snip it right there and get it out of the way so it doesn't confuse me in the future. But yep, you just need the resistor hooked up to where these two lines hooked up. And that will make the computer think that you have the proper key in there at all times. And you won't have any issues. And not only will this prevent the VAT system from stranding you, you can just use a regular key now instead of having to get in the one with the resistor in it. One thing you do have to watch out, I had a key made for this. In fact, it was this key right here. And the problem was I put it in and it wouldn't work. Well, the deal was, since it has that resistor pellet, the key has to go in farther than this key was designed to go. So the key was stopping about here and wouldn't let it turn because it had a shoulder right here that was extended. I don't know if you can see that, but I ground, ground this down to where the key will drop in further and go all the way in, then it works just perfect. So you might run into that getting a replacement key made, but just grind those shoulders down so it'll go all the way into the lock and you're good. If you wanted to get really fancy, two other ways you could do this is, because uh, I had this trouble with my daughter's Corvette, her BCM is fried basically, and it was activating the vats, but you could also go down to the BCM and you could slice into the wires coming right out of the BCM and put the resistor there. And that would eliminate a possibility of a bad connection anywhere between the key and the BCM. And if you wanted to get really, really fancy, you could actually take the BCM apart and solder the resistor across the contacts inside the BCM. And that would be the absolute ultimate because then you should never have any trouble with a bad connection whatsoever. If, if you did, it would be on the actual circuit board in the BCM. And that's probably something I'm going to do this winter on this car, since I'm going to have it out and be working on it anyway. But that's how you bypass the VAT system to make sure it doesn't strand you. Thanks for watching.